Hey, welcome back to Rob's Garage Woodworking. Today, I just want to talk about uh, torque and anti-seize compound. People make lots of comments on my auto videos of me using a torque wrench and the fact that I use anti-seize compound. And let's get into this. We'll, uh, we'll talk a little bit about it and why I do what I do and uh, what the benefits are. So torque, torque is measured in inch pounds, foot pounds, or newton meters. I've worked in a couple of different industries. Sometimes you'll hear me make a mistake and say inch pounds or newton meters. Um, the default for all my videos is actually foot pounds because my main uh, audience is in the states. So uh, sometimes I make little mistakes like that because I'm kind of focused on you know what I'm saying in my video what I'm wor actually working on because I'm actually doing the repair at the same time that I'm doing the video <laughs> so it's not like a stage thing like I'm actually doing the repair um, so I'm also concerned about uh, you know like the camera angle and the lighting all at the same time and I'm working by myself while I'm doing all this so I don't have anybody to to uh, you know say oh this is wrong or that's wrong or whatever while I'm there so it's just me and the tripod usually sometimes I have somebody hold the camera for me but very rarely so let's talk a little bit about torque so torque has a safety range it has like a plus minus and it has a tolerance which is the plus minus part and it's got a nominal which is basically the middle torque so each fastener has its own torque spec and there's actually a, an engineering book that you can use and that will tell you based on the threads and the size what the torque spec is for the fastener itself now that doesn't include the clamping force that you may require for whatever that bolts is holding together right so you might need a specific clamping force for that as well which would change perhaps which uh, bolt and nut you're going to use for it. So the torque specs are designed for the fastener. Uh, they also have to cater to the desired clamping force and basically the torque spec has a safety range and all you have to do is fall within that safety range. So that's why they pick the nominal right in the middle because if you're a little low or a little high it doesn't matter. You want to fall within that range. All right. So multiple torques. So while I'm working on stuff, you see me sometimes I'll torque something two or three times. Well, if you look at the number of videos you see of people's tires flying down the roadway, that's why I multiple torque things. I make sure that everything is torqued and torqued properly. Now, in the auto industry, the auto industry actually, they verify their torque multiple times. So they don't want to get sued. They don't want to be in court and they don't want their customers to have an accident, right? So they verify it. So any bolt on your car and a lot of bolts on your car may be torqued up to three times. Okay. So if I torque something three times, I put it on and I torque it three times. Well, that's well within the auto industry uh, norm. Okay. So a lot of people say, well, you know, they taught me in school that you're only supposed to torque it once. Well, this is true. You only have to torque it once. But if you're going to go over everything and you've got a big assembly on your hands, like brakes are important, right? So you want to make sure that those are torqued properly. So you're going to go over and you're going to torque it again to make sure that it's been torqued properly. So it's very important. So also the fastener, when you retorque something, it's actually achieved the nominal torque so when you retorque it, you're just waiting for it to click. You're not going to click, and after it clicks, you're not going to push it for another quarter turn, or you know, you're not going to round it off three more times after it clicks. You're just going to go till it clicks. So the fastener really doesn't move. So your torque and your clamping uh, force is virtually identical to the nominal spec that you started with, that you dialed your torque wrench into. So let's talk about anti-seize compound. So I want to make sure that the information I give you is as accurate as possible. So I've done a, a bunch of reading on this. Um, it's pretty interesting, actually. So I looked at the Permatex site. I looked at a few manufacturing sites. Manufacturing.net is a good one. And Permatex Anti-Seize Lubricant is a highly refined blend of aluminum, copper, and graphite lubricants. 
uh, used during the assembly to prevent galling and seizing due to weather, weathering and chemicals. Anti-seize assures easier disassembly uh, temperature range up to 1600 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, salt and corrosion resistance and ideal for marine use. And there's a non-aerosol version with a military spec number. Um, although the purpose of anti-seize may be obvious due to its name, the subject is not well understood and certainly underutilized. Anyone who's ever snapped a head off a bolt or screw would sympathize that a lot of time, blood, sweat, and maybe even tears are wasted when anti-seize is an afterthought. A bolted joint which experiences a high temperature environment and requires future maintenance, for example, your brakes, your wheel lug nuts, all that stuff, right? is your typical application for anti-seize. They can also be used to improve gasket performance, provide more consistent clamp load, prevent galling, improve electrical conductivity, and protect against harsh, uh, and protect against harsh corrosive environments. Anti-seize has been around since 1940, and now there are several different products on the market of varying composition, and these uh, compositions are tailored to uh, specific needs. So you got to find out which one you need. So, like, for example, there's a couple of different formulas that they have. Uh, High-quality grease that goes to about 400 degrees. And then they have lubricating solids that are with the grease. And those can go up to 2,400 degrees Fahrenheit. All right. So does any seize affect torque? Well, any lubricant can affect torque, including any seize. Uh, clean parts, like if you spray it down with WD-40 when you take it apart, it's still got WD-40 on it when you put it back together. Um, grease on your fingers, all that stuff, all that can affect torque a little bit, right? So this is where the torque safety uh, specifications come into play, because they've got that tolerance, that plus minus tolerance. So even if you use the anti-seize compound, it doesn't significantly change your clamping force. It doesn't significantly change your torque. Yeah, and it'll, it'll fall within that safety range, so you really don't have to worry about it. Now, the torque of the fasteners, if anything, will be slightly higher than without the anti-seize. Because it's a lubricant, so it'll turn a little bit more. So you might get an extra eighth of a turn or something. So in the auto industry, they use... Um, various films and coatings on their fasteners and assemblies. Sometimes there's an oil film, sometimes there's wax film, uh, sometimes the bolts have a galvanized coating on them so that they, they don't rust. Um, and sometimes they even have like a, a dry Loctite, and you'll find the dry Loctite on uh, SRS parts, uh, specifically like airbag parts and things of that nature. So in closing, most people who do a lot of work on their own vehicles use uh, anti-seize compound, and we use it because of experience. Now, is it safe? Yes, it's safe to use. Do you have to use it? No, if you don't want to use it, you don't have to use it. It's a free country, right? So that's it. That's, uh, that's my whole spiel. If you want to use it, fine. It'll save your bacon next time you want to take that bolt out. And if you don't mind, you know, getting the oxyacetylene torch on it and spending an extra 20 or 30 minutes, don't use it. Doesn't bother me. <laughs> anyway, that's it. That's my that's my speech on torque and anti-seize. Anyway, thanks for watching.